Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake. We're AV Data. Thanks for learning how to automate the boring with Alteryx. In this video, we're taking a look at workflow and user settings in the Alteryx environment to help you maximize your user experience. First, we'll take a look at the workflow configuration panel and then take a deep dive in the user settings menu, taking a look at some of the advanced options available through the user settings. To access the workflow configuration panel, we'll click into the white space of the canvas, and you'll notice that the configuration panel shows us the base workflow configuration screen, which are the main canvas options. Here we could switch our layout direction from horizontal to vertical. We can also update our annotation and connection progress settings. We recommend that you show them with tool names and show the connection progress. On the workflow tab, we can update the type of workflow and even specify the type of macro if we're building a macro. We can also add workflow constants, both strings and numbers, if we want to refer to them in formula tools and have one place to update it. Some great options on the runtime tab, in addition to the location of your temporary files and memory usage, there is a global limit for all of your input tools. So here if I select five, we see that the input data tool will only refer to the first five sheets in this Excel workbook. So it's a nice place to have one record limit while you're building and testing. We also have the ability to disable browse tools and or tools that write outputs. So as you're developing the core of your workflow, you can disable some of these tools that take a long time to process. Now to know exactly how long each tool takes to run within our workflow, within the runtime tab, we can enable performance profiling. So here I've elected to show macro messages. So we're seeing messages inside the macro, as well as at the very bottom performance profiling, where we get a descending list of the time it took for each tool to run. We also have workflow events that we can add either a run command reference or send emails directly from the Alteryx designer upon the completion of a workflow. On the meta info tab, we can update the workflow name, add a description and author details. And if the XML view is enabled, we can get a look at the XML of the entire workflow. Now we would enable that by going into the user settings so let's take a deeper look at what's available within the user settings. On the defaults page, um, there are some nice options towards the bottom here where we can turn off some of the default items um, that may be uh, a little bit of a nuisance as you start to build frequently within Alteryx. Um, on the canvas tab, we can update the color and um, the shape of our workflow, whether or not we'd like to see a grid and what type of connections we'd like to see. So here if I select A, B, data, blue, and straight lines, might not be a, a great look, Ooh. but it is certainly customized. <laughs> so back into the user settings, um, moving on to the advanced tab. Um, here are some really powerful options. So this is where we would uh, tell Alteryx that we wanna see XML in the properties window, as well as the asset management screen, which allows you to easily tag additional files your Alteryx packages. On the macros tab, we can add references to multiple macro folders on our PCs. And on the localization tab, we can add some defaults. Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.